Welcome to our homestead, welcome to our orchard, and welcome to our garden. Today we're going to be talking about eight homemade organic pesticides and fungicides and bactericides that work really well for us. And then at the end of the video, we are going to talk about a few that are maybe a little controversial, but they might be very helpful for you. Let's go. So in front of me, we have our go-to items for taking care of both pests and uh, diseases in our gardens and on our fruit trees. But before I talk about any of this, I want to reiterate that the number one way to prevent disease in your garden and pests is to have good soil health, which leads to good healthy plants. That in itself is the best defense but if your soil isn't perfect then you may need something like these every single one of the products that i use on a weekly or a sometimes daily basis i will list in the description below so go down there and check them out now when talking about each one of these we're going to talk about its properties and what it actually does for the plant or against the disease or insect. Now please forgive the fan noise next to me. It's already 93 degrees here in Northeast Texas. Let's talk about my two favorites first. First for diseases is a liquid copper fungicide. And then for pests, neem oil and soap. So for your copper solution, the most common is copper hydroxide, but there's also copper sulfate. This one is copper diammonia diacetate and it works incredibly well. This one is by Southern Ag. So what the copper ions do is they get in and disrupt the pathogen uh, proteins and enzymes. All you need to know is it works incredibly well. It's usually recommended to mix one ounce per gallon of water and not spray more than every two weeks because the accumulation of copper can cause issues in the plant and for you. But Otherwise, it's incredibly safe. So the next one, neem oil and soap. I highly recommend that you get Dr. Bronner's cell suds. And the reason for that is it's high degree of biodegradability. And this is probably the best one on the market. The second best would be a pure Castile soap, something that's just made out of uh, lye and uh, fats, but this one is the best. So if you're wondering, neem oil disrupts the young larva and young insects um, hormonal system so they can't mature to a next stage. So this doesn't work really great on mature bugs, especially if they have a hard exoskeleton. However, the soap combination with it helps it to stick onto the bugs. Now it does wash away really easy, but it helps it to stick onto the insects which only magnifies its uh, potency. So I highly recommend this one. Now, if this isn't working for you, you can go to an insecticidal soap. Now the insecticidal soap I use is by a company called Safer, and it is listed as organic. It's usually potassium or sodium salts mixed with a fatty acid. And what that does is breaks down a protective coating on a bug or on an insect and it, the cells start to collapse in an insect. So that's how this works and this one has worked incredibly well for us. And we just mix that per the instructions on the bottle itself. But be careful of this. Use it sparingly because in some instances it can burn the leaves of your plants. The next one, one of my favorites, especially for killing ants. If you haven't seen our ant killing video in the past, go check it out at the top of the screen. But this is pure cold pressed orange oil. This is pressed out of orange peels. And what it does is it melts the wax coating on the insect's uh, exoskeleton as well as the respiratory system. So it completely suffocates them. It melts everything off and just like soap suffocating them, this will also suffocate them in a different way. So both of them work incredibly well. If you want to just suffocate a, an insect, this works well for like wasps and things like that and other hard bodies. So you can use, I obviously recommend the cell suds first, 
but this uh, Dawn dish detergent does a bang up job when you want to kill a uh, hive of wasps and things like that. I know that's not a direct pest for your garden and some wasps are beneficial, but if you gotta get rid of them, you gotta get rid of them. Now another great fungicide is sulfur powder. This prevents the spores from germinating, the spores from any bacteria or fungus from germinating, and it works really well. However, it doesn't work if the disease has already attached itself and it is attacking your plant. So it is a preventative, and I recommend it. It has always done us great in the garden. And for this, it's just a dust, so use as directed on the package. If I didn't mention earlier, I mixed the orange oil at one ounce per gallon of water. Just a word of caution on the sulfur dust. Don't put it on your plants if you've used any type of oil. You need to wait about 30 days before you do that because they can combine and cause some toxicity problems for your plants. Now here's one of everybody's favorite. This is diatomaceous earth. So DE, just a dust, we just spread it out over our garden and we usually use this dust and miser uh, little garden sprayer here. You can see it's still coming out at the end, but it, this works very, very well to spread it evenly and dust on the leaves, down below, everywhere. What this does, this is uh, silica from tiny aquatic animals. And what that silica does is it starts to cut into the insects, but it also starts to absorb the oils and fats on the insects, draw that away from their either exoskeleton or soft body, and it will cause them to dehydrate, shrivel up, and die. So this is a calcium carbonate powder. We mix this with water, usually about a half cup to a gallon. And what it's specifically used for is for blossom end rot on your tomatoes. It works incredibly well for that because tomatoes can become calcium deficient. So other plants can become calcium deficient as well, but we mostly use the, this for that disease. We will spray it on the tomatoes themselves and also pour it into the soil at the roots. The roots will take it up, but the spray will also help stop that uh, blossom end rot on those tomatoes. So these two are kind of organic, but kind of not, and this one is definitely not. So I'm gonna talk about all three of these. The first one being hydrogen peroxide. Now there's some bacterial and fungal diseases that kill the roots of plants. If that is happening to you and there's no other way to stop it, then last resort is to use some hydrogen peroxide. What that does is go into the soil and kills that fungal and bacterial growth. However, it, is, it doesn't discriminate. It will kill your good soil bacteria in the good fungus. So this, like I said, is a very last resort in doing that because then you're gonna have to build your soil health back up. If it's just to save those plants, yeah, is it worth it? I don't know, you're gonna have to make that decision. Now the next products I have here contain spinosad, which is listed as being organic, but it is also under the uh, USDA pesticide list. So can you trust it? I'm not sure. I have used it in seriously heavy bug pressure. It's uh, derived from soil bacterium and it works pretty well. But uh, like I said, I only use it in pretty serious bug situations. Now the last one I do use, and I'm gonna talk about two more that I do not use and why. The last one I use is Fertilome. Fertilome is a straight up pesticide. We have a ton of fruit tree diseases, a lot of blight in this area. If my copper is not working, which it usually does, if it's not, I use the Fertilone. Now this was recommended to me by Michigan State University Ag Office and it really works. If you have to use it to keep your tree alive, use it. Now for the peroxide, you can use a one teaspoon to one cup ratio and then mix all other things per the directions on the bottles. Now the two that I do not use are BT and pyrethrins. Now BT is commonly known as Bacillus thermo I probably didn't say that right, but 
I don't use that for a few specific reasons. So for BT, I don't use it because it acts really slow. And it is also somewhat non-discriminatory. Now it doesn't hurt honeybees, which is great, but it does hurt some other beneficial insects like lace wings and ladybugs. So I've never used it in my garden and I'm not going to. Now the other one, pyrethrins are derived from chrysanthemum flowers. And the problem with it is it doesn't discriminate and it hurts bees. So it will absolutely never get near my garden. Although it works fast, I don't want it near my bees on my property. As a bonus, I'm gonna talk about my sprayers. I have a lot of these sprayers and I recommend you get a lot of them as well. I'm gonna talk about the positives to these Chapin Pros and the negatives to these DB Smiths, which I liked in the past and there's some features about it that I like, but I can't continue buying these for one reason, and that's this top. This is kind of a funnel down into the uh, reservoir itself, and the plunger kind of screws into the top. Well, if you're pouring in things like your neem oil and some very sticky items, it builds up right here, and it is incredibly difficult to get this top off. The difference with these chapins is that the whole top here comes off just like that. So there is no place for that stickiness to get. It can get up here, but it's so large that it's really, really easy to turn off just by grabbing it like this. This one right here is an extreme challenge. And I can't even get it off right now because it is kind of glued in there. And it, that is really disappointing because Great features, it's got a wide bottom, it stands better, it's got this little thing where it you know, holds this wand in the bottom and it works well, but I can't get the top off very well at all. I am also giving Solo a chance again. These Solos have a similar uh, top to the Chapin Pros in that they just come off like that. So there's no way that the soap is gonna drip down onto here and kind of gum it up. And if it does gum it up at all, it's gonna be really, really easy to get it off. But I highly recommend this Chapin Pro. This thing has been awesome, these two gallons. I've got a whole bunch of them all scattered all over the property. Um, I haven't thrown this away yet just because I don't throw things away unless they're totally broken but uh, it's not great. Get yourself one of these. Now have a beautiful blessed day and go click on this video right here which shows you the top six survival crops that we recommend that everybody plant in their garden. Have a great day, we'll see you next time, bye.